Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today for you guys, is another Mandalorian review. Today we're tackling episode 12, or the fourth episode of season 2, I believe. Um, this one is, of course, The Siege. Uh, this is uh, basically a review and a little bit of recap. Of course, spoilers, as always. Um, there's a lot of interesting things to take from this episode, as long as you know a lot of uh, uh, behind-the-scenes bloopers that you've probably heard about, but if you haven't, I'm going to be telling you about it. Um, so basically, they're on Navarro again. And uh, before the Mandalorian takes the child to find Ahsoka Tano, that he got the information from Bo-Katan, uh, he basically he needs to go fix his ship, because the Razor Crest is kind of effed up. So he goes back to Navarro, where Cara Dune, or the, uh, what is it, not the Master, um, whatever that her name is, the, 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 some, the someone. She's, she's, she's like important now, basically. Um, and of course, Grief Karga, they're back on Navarro, and they're like, hey, you know, what's up? Uh, Mandalorian's like, hey, I need you to fix my ship. And they're like, hey, we need you to take out an Imperial force, because if we take out this big base, uh, it will kind of rid uh, the planet of, um, you know, these kind of forces, uh, the Imperial forces. And Mandalorian's like, alright, fine, we'll do it, you know, so they go. And uh, great action scenes throughout, you know, uh, Carl Weathers, who plays Grief Karga, he actually, oh, shit, dropped my ring. He directed the episode, so that was really cool as well to see. Uh, but mo going forward with that, there's a lot of great action scenes in here where, uh, you know, the, the wipe is used a lot, which is kind of cool. They're like, you know, in Star Wars, it goes, whoop, 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 that kind of thing. And uh, it did the, whoop, it did that a lot in this episode, which I don't mind, you know, it was kind of cool. Because um, they're, you know, using the same hallways and all that, same set pieces and all that. Um, a lot of the CGI is used to its full extent, especially the uh, Scout Trooper uh, speeder bike chase that they kind of did in Return of the Jedi. Uh, on Endor, which looked like complete crap because it was from the 80s. Uh, so this actually looks good. Um, maybe the CGI could, be, could have been a little bit better here. Um, you know, it, it's good uh, for a TV show. It's excellent, you know, because you're not, you know, you don't really see too many of the uh, animated characters moving in, in, you know, like the Flash and uh, Arrow and Supergirl. You're like, oh, it looks like crap. You know, this looks good primarily because the Scout Troopers are like this the whole time. You know, that's all they're doing. Uh, there was a shot where they kind of move a little bit, and I could tell it was very kind of like rubbery and weird looking, you know, how like CGI characters could be like wax looking or just kind of uh, really like flimsy and flailing around. That's kind of what they were doing. Um, nothing crazy, you know, nothing really negative there. I uh, just wanted to point it out that, you know, it, it's not perfect CGI, but for a TV show budget, um, the ships, the action scenes, the environments, the CGI is still outstanding. Writing great, action scenes are really great. Uh, a lot of lot, Mandalorian has some of the best action in anything canon Star Wars. I mean, it's got a lot of fist fights and knife throwing and bla bla, you know, bla bla, blaster shooting and all that. It's it's really good. Um, I do think that the sequels are my favorite for action, but uh, prequels are good too. I mean, they're all good, really. I think the originals are the worst. Um, but again, that goes with the time period, you know. But still, uh, Mandalorian has a lot of good action scenes. Now, the big big takeaway here is Moff Gideon is preparing his forces, right? He's preparing his dark troopers, he's preparing his legion to, uh, essentially, uh, when one of those aliens, I swear to God, that alien that puts the tracking device on the Razor Crest, I think she's, uh, or it, is, uh, the same species that's in the campaign for Star Wars Squadrons, I'm pretty sure. They look exactly the same. That one, Gunny, I think her name is, Gunny, maybe? Um, great game, great campaign, but I think it's the same, uh, species. And then uh, basically they put a tracking thing and Gideon now is like, oh, you know, we need we need the child, you know, we need its essence and we need, uh, presumably it's Metachlorians because uh, Baby Yoda or the child is very, uh, you know, strong with the force. Uh, so maybe that's why. Um, and, you know, Moff Gideon's like, oh, we need to, we need to, you know, we, we need to go get our army and we're going to go hunt Mandalorian and get the child and we're going to do my evil things. And it's setting up the greater plot, which is really cool. You know, we're getting that extra plot point in there. Um, and now the two big things to take away, one is actually part of canon, one is not part of canon. The first one is uh, the clones. Everyone's like, oh my god, they're cloning. They're, it's Now, this, yes, first of all, yes, this is a callback to the sequels. Two, A and two, A, whatever. Two, um, <laughs> uh, it's not Palpatine and it's not Snoke. Um, because Palpatine and Snoke are being cloned and kind of made on Exegol, uh, not Navarro. So I'm assuming... It is the Dark Troopers, it is the Troopers, not, uh, you know, maybe it's leading the way. Uh, presumably, my theory, again, I don't really trust theories because when it's wrong, people freak out. I don't, I don't care about theories. It, whatever happens, happens. Uh, and normally, I like what happens. Um, I'm expecting they're going to either kill the child or do something. I read this somewhere, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, they might take a child, and uh, <laughs> not a child, but, you know, the child, 
and uh, maybe they'll kill it. Who knows? You know, I don't want to see that thing die, but maybe it'll die. Who knows? He eats those green Oreo things from like a cake shop or something, like these really pretty cake shops where a girl would go to, you know, that kind of thing. It looks like a pastry like that. And uh, he's munching and crunching on him in the Razor Crest. And, you know, he's a great, he's cute, he's a good character. I wouldn't say great, but, he, you know, he's all right. Um, so I, I'm assuming, sadly, maybe they'll kill him and they'll extract his Metachlorians to then create the clone of Palpatine, or maybe even Palpatine's son's clone, which, of course, we know doesn't have any powers. Uh, he marries a girl and then they have Rey. But... Um, and maybe it's even a, a you know a, a thing to go for Snoke. We don't know at this point. You know, there's a lot of theories, and that's the problem with Star Wars. Don't trust the theories because when a theory doesn't turn the way you want, and then you get freaked out, and you, you say, "Oh, Star Wars sucks because it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen." You can't think like that at all. You have to go, "Okay, that's a theory. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter." You know, what I mean, I'm not gonna risk my whole life on this. Um, so who knows? There's a lot of interesting things going on. A lot of world building. A lot of canon. A lot, it's great. You know, what I mean, I can't wait. There's so much here that's really good. Now, the other thing that isn't part of the canon is, of course, you've probably seen it. Uh, there's a shot of the Mandalorian, uh, Grief, uh, Cara Dune, and that blue gill dude from all the way back in Season 1, Episode 1. Um, he's kind of funny. You know, he's like the comic relief. I think it's pretty funny. Um, he, uh, there's, there's a shot where they're in the hallway shooting at the Stormtroopers, you know, uh, exploding when the, when the lava rises on the, the thing on Navarro, that big station. And there's just a dude, just like a normal dude, in blue jeans, a t-shirt, and a watch. Um, this is not part of canon, so don't think, you know, they're bringing jeans and watches into canon. I'm sure there's watches in canon, but I don't know about jeans. Um, this, again, 100% not canon. It's just a, it's an editing mistake. It's a production error. There's just a normal-ass dude with a, with a shirt, a watch, and pants just standing there. Um, I didn't notice it. Uh, I saw it on the internet in a still image. Uh, my mom noticed it. I didn't notice it. Cause, you know, why wouldn't I notice it? Uh, I'm only a franchise fanatic. But, uh, you know, a lot of great stuff happened there. But this this is the last thing I want to touch upon. Um, and this is not regarding the episode. I'm going to give the episode a pretty much a perfect score. It's just like, Star, you know, all Star Wars is good. I really have nothing to complain about. It's great. Um, and I can't wait for the next episodes. But, you know, a lot of people go, oh, my God. You know that The Last Jedi, the throne room scene, which is my favorite scene of all time, by the way. Uh, they go into it, and they're like, oh, there's a guy over there, and he's swinging at the air, but there's no one there. And I don't think that's a mistake. I just think he simply missed, and maybe it's comedic. There are things in that Last Jedi, that one shot, uh, where it is supposed to be comedic, and people misinterpret it as a mistake. The one thing I'm talking about, there's a dude on the right that kind of switches his... Uh, fiber blade or whatever, and I don't care. It doesn't ruin my immersion. It's still my favorite scene of all time, and I love it 100%. Obi-Wan Kenobi's hair, his Padawan braids, and the Phantom Menace go from every side. He has a wig. He doesn't have a wig. Uh, episode 1, uh, Natalie Portman, Padme Amidala, she's talking to herself in the corner, and you can see her mouthing Qui-Gon's lines. Uh, Luke Skywalker completely missing his kick by this much in Return of the Jedi. Um... I mean, I could go on and on about production errors on Star Wars. I mean, it's in everything. You know, it's in anything. Um, so a lot of people are going to freak out and go, Oh my god, Mandalorian's aft. They ruined my immersion. You know, and I don't care. You know I mean? Me personally, yes, I will have to dock a point because of their carelessness. Because I'm reviewing it. But as a viewer and as a massive Star Wars fan who doesn't freak out online every five goddamn seconds, I don't give a crap at all. I don't care. Yeah, okay, I got a doc at a point because it was a production error and it was a mistake. But does it ruin my experience of watching this episode? Just like The Last Jedi and The Phantom Menace and Return of the... Every movie has it. Every single Star Wars movie for, for, that I've ever seen has a moment where I either don't like, like a line or an acting or something like that, um, or just a simple production error. Does it ruin my experience? No, I don't care. So at the end of the day, it's there. I'm going to have to give this episode an A, I know, big deal, or a 9 out of 10 just because of that. Um... Not a big deal at all. If you really think it's a big deal, you need to not think it's a big deal, because it's not. Uh, just like the braids, just like the, the fight, just everything. You know what I mean? It, it shouldn't ruin your experience. And if it does, you might be watching movies the wrong way. Um, so I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, again, I can't wait. That was, I, you know, it's a funny little error, for sure. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. It's all, it's all over the Internet. Um, you don't need to watch the episode. It's in there, but just look it up. There's probably still a picture that I saw. You'll see it. Um, but still, it was really great. Uh, I loved everything about it. Yeah, production error. What are you going to do? Nothing's perfect. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for more. I thought that was funny, though. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Remember, all Star Wars is good, and we'll see you guys in the next video.